So on the path of Advaita, we describe reality at three levels. Why? Because some of us still take the stand as the body, some of us take the stand as the mind, and some of us take the stand as the awareness or the witness. Yes, there are many people on, in this world who do not understand Advaita. They are very firmly grounded in their stand as the body. Yes, so Advaita, that is why catering to everybody describes reality in these three stands. Very clear? Vyavharik Satyam is the transactional reality or the empirical reality. Empirical which is experienced through the senses. Yeah? Which I have proof for by sight, sound, smell, taste and touch. Yeah? So it is transactional reality. I can verify it by these five senses and by thought as well. Yeah? And I interact with this world through this body-mind only. Yeah? I take the stand as the body-mind and I interact with the world. So Advaita is saying, of course, when uh, the body is sick, the body needs to be catered to, you will have to do the Vyavhar. That is a very good word which, even though I, dis uh, I translate it, into English as transaction, but it, it literally means for the sake of exchange, I have to do something. Yeah, literally means for the sake of exchange, I have to do the transaction. That is why it is called Vyavharik Satyam. So if I have to take care of the body, my stomach is not well, I will have to go to the doctor and take the medicine. Yeah, if uh, somebody is sick and whatever, a surgeon needs to do an operation on somebody's leg, he can't tell the patient, you are not the body. Don't worry. You are the witness. Yeah, The patient will get exasperated. Hello, keep your Advaita in your pocket. Take care of my leg. Yeah, So it doesn't work like that. When... I have taken the stand of the body and mind and I'm experiencing trouble through the body and mind. I have to find the solution through this body and mind level. So if the body is sick, you take care of the body. When body needs food, you give it its food. Now this is again at the level of Advaita level 1. Yeah, you will lead, read a higher level. In fact, I think the meditation that I did for you, the contemplation, the Savyadatta, talks about the same. I will get there. Yeah, so this is at Advaita level 1, this explanation. Okay, be very clear. Pratibhasik Satyam is apparent reality, where it is just based on my imagination. Yeah, either I am daydreaming, Lost in, I want this, I like this, this will happen, that will happen. I'm imagining. Yes, this imagination is pratibhasik reality. Yeah, pratibhasik satyam. Apparent. It is not there. It is just in my imagination. So similarly, a dream in the night, the tiger was in my imagination. It was not really there. But a mistake that I make. Yeah, I'm walking, I see a rope and I think it is a snake. I get scared. I really get scared. Yes, there's this real fear that I experience and I see clearly, oh, it is a rope. The fear is gone. Yeah, so this was apparent reality. Pratibhasik Satyam. Yeah, I'm taking the stand as the mind. So whenever I'm creating a story in the mind, whenever I'm imagining things, when I am building something in my own head, my own concepts, my own ideas, my own intellectual analysis, I am in Pratibhasik Satyam. 
Yeah. The third level of reality is the paramarthic satyam, where I have taken the stand as the awareness. It is called non-indirect. The literal translation of the word aparoksha is non-indirect. Yeah? Indirect means what? A is equal to C, B is equal to C, therefore A is equal to B. An assumption, a hypothesis, a deductive logic is indirect. Yeah. So, because they wanted to remove even the indirect out of this category, they put it very clearly, non-indirect experience, anubhav, not intellectual analysis, experience. Yeah? So direct experience, which is devoid of conditioning, that is paramarthic satyam. In Paramarthic Satyam, I see it. Oh yeah, everything is just an appearance. This light, this camera, this computer, this table, these are just appearances. Yes, I am putting the label of physical object on mind phenomena. Yeah, so this becomes clearer as you explore and search within more and more. So that is called Paramarthic Satyam. Jagrit Swapna, this is a waking dream. So Advaita says this waking dream is Vyavharic reality. Yeah, you do transactions lightly because it is a dream, remember. It's a waking dream, but it is a dream. You do your transactions very lightly in this world. Don't get too serious. Float like a cloud. Yeah. Don't stick on to anything. Clouds don't stick on to anything. Clouds don't hold on to anything. They just float. Yeah. Just float through it. Recognize that I have no proof of this form. Yeah. This is not different from a dream. Again and again remind yourself. Let me not take this seriously. Until I have proof of its reality. Yes. Right now. It's. Obviously, my direct experience that there is no proof of anything outside my field of awareness. There is nothing. I have no proof of the existence of the other room behind this wall. It is just an indirect logic that I can apply. That before coming into this studio to talk to you, I was in that room. After leaving the studio, I went to that room. That means I assume in between the two events, when I was coming to this room and when I leave this room and go back there, that room existed. This is indirect logic. It's not my direct experience. Get it? Yeah. So you saying I have no proof of the existence of matter. That's why Advaita says that we exist at these three levels. At these three levels, when it is required, you do your work. Slowly you will come to know you are not doing. Just like you have started seeing that thoughts arise on their own, very soon it will become evident. Perceptions are not different from this mind phenomena, that category that the thought belongs to. Perception is what I label as action as people, as things, as job, as career, as son, as daughter, as mother, as father, as this event, as that situation. I have labeled all this. It is nothing but perception. Perception is nothing but mind phenomena. When I recognize that thought arises of its own accord, there is no thinker, there is no chooser, there is nobody deciding between this thought or that thought. Similarly, there is no chooser of perceptions. There is nobody saying that this perception arises first, this arises second, this is related to this. Yeah. Do your research on exactly the same questions that you are going to do on the thought applied to perception. 
then it becomes very clear. Very clear. Yeah. I leave the rest to your research. Explore this perception as you are going to explore thought. You have no proof of matter. Oh.